Hello friends, today we are going to discuss one of the important topic that is histone modification with special reference to acetylation and methylation and its role in gene regulation. Histone modification. That means acetylation and methylation. You know, before we go into the topic, we have to learn about certain basics for better understanding. We knew that how the DNA is organized, say in the form of chromatin. Chromatin is nothing but DNA plus other proteins. Other protein is histone and non-histone proteins forms chromatin. And the basic bit for chromatin is nucleosome. That means we are talking about DNA packaging system. Nucleosome means a histone octomer that means H2A, H2B, H3, H4 into copies. For example, this is histone octomer around which the DNA wraps for twice. That means at the length of 150 base phase constitute a nucleosome. And this nucleosome co coiled that means in the way of some 10 nm fiber, what we call beads on a string structure. And this is the basic organizational framework for chromosomes. In the long run, and these 10 nm fiber later become 30 nm fiber, what we call solenoid concept. That means a group of nucleosomes. That means each turn of solenoid contains six nucleosomes, and this 30 nm fiber further organized to form loops. How? By exposing SARS, what we call SARS scaffold associated regions, which are nothing but ATG regions, so that they can bind with scaffold protein. So that the 30 nm fiber further coiled to form a loop and eventually they form chromosomes. That means it starting from 2 nm to 10 nm, 30 nm, 300 nm, 700 nm, and ultimately 1400 nm. That is how the DNA is properly organized. Okay, it's about the DNA packaging system. What makes DNA to compact, that means to organize a compact structure? How it has been organized? Simply based on one basic principle. The positive and negative that means chemical attraction between the histones and the dna so the dna had a negative charge because of phosphate backbone we knew that and positive charge is because of histones because histones are basic proteins okay this positive that means histones are positive that means basic whereas dna is the negative you know negative and these two and this is what we call chemical attraction is a basis for the dna packaging system that's fine but it's about packaging but when there is a requirement of gene expression what we call transcription and transcription and all that there should be some uncoiling say it's all about heterochromatin heterochromat means much condensed DNA structure that means chromosomal structure which are rod shaped but say during mitosis particularly during metaphase we can witness this but during gene expression there should be a loosening what we call uncoiling of the chromosomal structure what we call euchromatin and we have we have learned and we about the, the chromatin structure in previous classes that euchromatin means loosely organized transcriptionally active germs whereas heterochromatin means tightly condensed transcriptionally inactive germs what makes them transcriptionally active and inactive because of their organization Euchromatin is loose, heterochromatin is tight. Therefore, loose, what we call uncoiling, is required for gene expression. How they get uncoiled? I told you already. The basic fundamental for DNA packaging system is chemical attraction positive histone, negative DNA. So, this has to get this disrupted, simply disturbed, what we call histone disruption, simply. Histone disruption. How? By chemical modifications, what we call histone modification. These are all we study under the concept of chromatin dynamics. No. Histone modification, there are a wide variety of chemical modifications. See, methylation, acetylation, phosphorylation, ubiquitization, etc. 
but methylation and acetylation are very important in gene expression point of view and they have a wider role in gene regulation how we will discuss one by one okay then it says about histone modification okay why these two have a greater role the first important striking question which hits our mind why only histone acetylation and methylation histone acetylation okay acetylation why why this is very important because you know i told you already these are autosomes and already the dna has been wrapped up during this process the tails what we call n terminal tails of histone we knew that m polypeptide have two ends n terminal and c terminal okay and this n terminal tails will be exposing to outside tail just like you know like the hanging over there just like the cloth hangs along a rope outside our building the same concept here they are hanging and this hanging enables the association with particular chemical compounds like methyl groups or particularly acetyl groups so that they can relax what we got uncoiling or loosening allowing the transcriptional elements that means transcription factors like tf2a tf2b cd etc and rna polymerase so that they can identify the promoter and sits on the promoter binding site like tata cat box and allow the transcription this is very important point that means histone acetylation is there is a crux point for loosening or uncoiling and explain it's an important role in gene expression if it doesn't uncoil if there is no acetylation there is no gene expression that means switch on if there is acetylation switch off if there is no acetylation but how they play an important role in gene regulation no just for understanding i will discuss one by one okay a basic structure and these are histone this is h2a this is h2b this is h3 and this is h4 okay and the in the form of an octomer octomer you know around which dna has been coiled for twice around 150 base pairs 150 base pairs but the thing is histones have the tails what we call n terminal tails n terminal tails this is very important and they are hanging out outside okay and exposing and these tails will be liable to acetylation this is very important which histone is liable to acetylation next whether all histones or just one histone or some histones that means we have h2a h2b h3 and h4 not all histones participate in acetylation there are certain target groups here h3 and h4 are the target h3 and h4 are the target regions for acetylation First, we'll learn the. Then we will go to the me mechanism. H3 and H4. Why? Because why? There is another specific target group called lysine. Lysine residues. Lysine is a basic amino acid, an important amino acid, and lysine present in more specifically specific lysines present in h3 and h4 are the target groups of acetylation and it enables to form uncoiled structure what we call euchromatin structure that the gene expression will be on so the, the most important point h3 and h4 are the groups are target group acetylation and in turn the specific amino acid is lysine residues not all amino acids and that that means specifically lysine residues specific lysine residues present in the n terminal tails will be subjected to acetylation that leads to loosening what we call uncoiling so that gene expression is on 
This is very, very, very important point. Okay. How? I will tell you how. Now is the exit mechanism. See, the acetylation will be, I don't already, where the acetylation is takes place. This is very important. See, H3. We are talking about acetylation. Okay. Lysine. Lysine is a target group in H3 and H4. In H3, the positions are 9, 14, 18, 23, 56. That means lys ninth lysine residue, fourteenth lysine residue, eighteenth lysine residue, twenty fifth lysine residue, fifty sixth lysine residue. You know we, we know that a, a polypeptide is nothing but a sequence of amino acids, and I'll tell you specific lysine residues in in, in H three. Then how about H four? It's about fifth, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. That means lysine amino acids present in H3, H4 at the re these respective positions will be subjected to acetylation. This is very important. I will die for five, five better understanding. That means in case of H4, it is 5, 8, 12, 16, 12, all present in you know N terminal ends will be liable to the Acetylation. But exactly, and how we form? We will write chemical structure for better understanding how this will work out. You know, just it's, it's about fundamental. This is like a lysine structure. This is a lysine. Then when it gets, when it's subjected to acetylation, adulotic. How the acetylation is done? Is in, in all the biological machinery, be it is the Krebs cycle or any other, enzymes are important. And which enzyme? HAT! Histone acetyl transferase. Actually, it's an irreversible reaction, no? Histone acetyl transferase. Simply called HAT. This will add acetyl group COCH3. Where? From where? Acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A is a mother source. Then it will decay. Then it will form a histone. Histylation will be done. That's it. This is the acetyl group. You know, this is the acetyl group, and this is called and this is the mother source, acetyl coenzyme A. This is how they become acetyl. That means lysine become acetylated simply by addition of COCH3 group, driving that means catalyzing by an enzyme called histone acetyl transferase hat and the mother source is acetyl coenzyme A. Okay. And the it's irreversible then. And who will take care of it? The same concept histone deacetylase. Deacetylase. Simply HDs. 
HDs or histone D acetylase. Hedgedox. This will remove the COCOH then form glycine. This is how they form. This is how the acetylation. Why the why it's a irreversible reaction? The why is a, a sorry reversible reaction. It's a common logic. If there is a gene expression, if there is a requirement of a, a, a activation of a gene, it has to get loosened. Then the job is done. That means gene expression, transcription, translation. Okay, transcription. Okay, then it has to again coil out. What we call again pack it up to deacetylation. So it's like addition of acetyl group to a acetyl acetyl transferase. After the, after the job is done, deacetylation. That's it. That is how they perform. That's all called we call chromatin dynamics. That means it is very clear that based on this histone acetylation he had and deacetylation had a specific tightly involving in chromatin dynamics, gene silencing, you know cellular proliferation, DNA duplication, DNA replication, the, 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 the DNA repair, nuclear imports, all different cellular mechanisms are machinery connected to the histone acetylation. That is a base, that means it's a fundamental addition of ester group and removal, that's it. Say, for better understanding, how it works. So this is the, this is something called, you know, is in case of gene expression is off, okay. I told you already, six nucleosomes for solenoid concept, in case, for, for turn, okay. Switch off. These are the tail. The tail. Then switch on. How about switch on? See, the same concept. That means acetylation. They become loose, it means that loosely arranged so that the transcriptional elements will come and bind here. Say this is a transcriptional factor. TF1 something, say any, any transcriptional, say TF2A, TF2B or TF3A etc. Just for instance, transcriptional factor and this is another transcriptional factor and this is RNA polymerase. This is RNA polymerase. These are transcriptional factors, TF simply. Then this is switch on. Why? Because you see here, here, these are the end terminal where the histone acetylation has been done. Simply acetylation. These are acetyl groups simply the blue dots indicate there are there is no acetyl group switch off acetylation hat histone acetyl transferase this will add up just you know antagonal ends are loosely uh, hanging and this add up the acetyl groups simply i told you where lysine residues say it is h3 it is 9 14 18 23 56 if it is h4 5 8, 12, 16, 20. Just add up then, lose up, allowing the transcription element like transcription factors, and then probably switch on. I told you already, this is a reversible reaction. If the job is done, then remove that. Who will take it off? Histone DSLS. That's it. That is how the issue. That means it's got what we call interconversion of euchromatin to heterochromatin. All on chromatin dynamics and it's have a wider role in cellular proliferation. I told you already. I told you in the in the even in, in the previous classes, chemical modifications, chemical elements, even at the tiny level, had a huge bearing on the cellular machinery. The histone installation is a terrific example. That's why the transversion mutation just at the sixth base position in beta gene. A valine replaces the glutamic acid for transversion mutation. Thus, just one single base pair, the point mutation. Just one chemical compound, acetyl CO3 will have a huge bearing on the anti DNA structure. Of course, 
and their life and how we adapt to the environment and how we act and how we move react all depends on this part this tiny element histone acetylation that's how they are the powerful important role in gene regulation whosoever that means who, who, who are concerned the research with dna packaging should learn about this okay then next important process is methylation unlike acetylation the most important is like uh, different dimensions and in his histone acetylation in general it leads to gene activation that means expression is on deacetylation expression is off we can say in general at least but methylation is not like that in general it, it is said that histone methylation leads to gene transcriptional repression that means expression is off it is promoting the heterochromatin but there are certain residues like arginine and lysine present in histone associate that means associate means methylation of some arginine not all some arginine that means at specific locations some arginine and some lysine groups in particular histone proteins may leads to transcriptional activity or heterochromatin what exactly i mean to say is histone methylation histone methylation say here the central elements are arginine these are also basic amino acids then lysine the lysine and arginine utterly not all there are some what where and where okay for example you know say in case of h3 for arginine i am saying h3 its position is 2 h4 is 3 in case of lysine h3 h3 this 4 then 9 then 27 then 36 then 79 in case of h4 this is 20 that means i told already there are some arginine and lysine amino acid residues present in h3 and h4 i told you h3 and h4 are the target groups for acetylation and methylation but not all lysine and uh, arginine residues specific in, even in case of acetylation also not all specific the same here on concept here in case of h3 this is a second arginine second position that's it in case of h4 the third one in case of lysine is 4 9 27 36 7 9 20 have a role in gene regulation but another, it's a complicated process i told you already unlike gene acetyl histone acetylation we cannot say histone methylation leads to gene activation in general it is said that in the adult already it's a transcriptional repressor but there are some arginine residues and lysine residues which involve in gene transcription that means transcription active and again it depends on the kind of amino there are different elements to execute this say specific amino acid then the load or intensity of methylation then the kind of enzyme here i told you these are participating elements in the methylation but it is not it, but it does not necessarily mean that the all these methylation leads to active transcription again there are some different elements which come into play say which amino acid load means methylation unlike acetylation group here methylation is different you know in acetylation what we have done just add one acetyl group coch but here it's not like that we may add one mono di two prime each have their unique consequences so that means what i did only complicated process in histone methylation is something like that okay specific say for example his lysine at ninth position may have a 
difference ninth, lies in ninth position plus one specific kind of methyl group may have a different reaction like transcription of what we call repressor at the same time lies in at fourth position with methyl group may activate transcription yes, that means take for example 9 and 27 of this is dimethyl and this is trimethyl okay whereas methylation just methylation case of 4 36 and 79 what we call on 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 i told you already specific amino acid position and the load of methylation either di or tri or mono say lysine at ninth position in h3 histone with which is dimethylated is off it doesn't encourage transcription the similar to that lysine at 27th position in h3 with which is trimethylated is also doesn't encourage transcription it is off and the lysine at fourth position 79th position and 36th position which are methylated which promote transcription it is on that is what i am going to say it is a complete so depending on the number that means location of the specific length um, specific position of the amino acid residue of course lysine because lysine and adrenaline are the target groups for methylation so specific adrenaline and lysine place into the and the same time load intensity mono diatribe diatribe may have one kind of consequence mono is different and kind of enzymes you know in case of both esterlation and methylation there are different families of enzymes say ZNAT1 ZNAT1 is one kind of histone acetyl transferase similar to that for methylation just like you know as esterlation is also an enzyme histone methyl transferase what we call HMT say set 1 this is one kind of histone methyl transferase it's the opposite histone demethylase histone demethylase that means depending on the kind of enzyme also it, it implied it had its implications you know whether expression is off or on that means apart from the number that means location or the position of the specific amino acid and also the intensity the kind of enzymes also matters that's why i told you histone methylation is a complicated process but somehow take it for granted for a while then tentatively we will think like this histone 4 that means lies in 4 36 7 and have transcription positive that means on and these on will allow the transcription I mean, just like the histone methylation job is done then off how it is done how it is done simply say the histone methyl transfer this will transfer the methyl group and who is the donor here this is called yes adenosyl l methionine yes adenosyl yes just like acetyl coenzyme a in case of esterylation is the donor group from which the histone acetyl transfer hat will take and add the acetyl group the, when the same concept here the methyl group will be added from yes adenosyl l methionine is the methyl group from which the histone methyl transferase will add that we say mamono or dia try to respect to amino acids okay i told you already if it is on how it ends see the simple concept just like there say consider this is as this as a histone H2, H2, B, H3, H4, H3, H4, H2A, and H2B. And the other trails, we add HMT, then then we just we add the methyl groups to the tails. I told you, just imagine these are H3, 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 H
H3 register means this is one or this one. Transcriptional activity will be promoted. And this one drive only histones for understanding, okay? And transcription is on. Given the fact this is easy. That means is how the same concept is same. If it is on, thus they will add the metal group and loosening off. If it is off, again they will remove the metal group, then coil. Loose, uncoil, simply that for that means add metal group, loose uncoil, allows the transcription element like RNA polymerase, transcription factors RNA polymerase. Okay. If it is job, if the job is done, then again remove the metal groups off. Again they will coil. This uh, is it's all how they organize themselves. And most important point, you know, all these are nothing but post-translational modifications, you know. Post-translational modifications. We have discussed at length when we discussed about translation process. Say, be it is acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, etc. All these are post-translational modifications of histone proteins which had a huge bearing on our cell art machinery. Simply the chromatin condensation and decondensation. So what we call chroma chromatin, that means transcriptional activity on or off, particularly. And even the entire DNA structure based on this. That means histone acetylation and in some cases histone methylation. So this is how they play an important role in gene regulation. Okay. And apart from my discussion, you ask me classes, you have to rely upon a standard book. In examination point, I have included my discussion along with some examination point of also. So follow a basic book and a reference book for better understanding. Okay? We will discuss some of the topic in the next class. Thank you.